Okay, thank you so much for um, for coming along, everybody. Welcome uh, to this webinar, um, Is Being a Teaching Assistant for You? We're really pleased that you're able to make it. Um, so first of all, I'm Peter, uh, your host today, and I am an operations team lead here at Zen Educate. Um, before working at Zen, I actually taught RE um, at a secondary school in London for three years. Um, I'm part of the resourcing team, so I'm really passionate about helping enthusiastic people um, come onto our platform uh, so they can find the perfect role in education, whether that's qualified teachers or um, people looking for teaching assistant work. Um, so today we'll be speaking about how to become a teaching assistant as well as the benefits of teaching assistant work and at the end of the workshop we'll also be sharing some exciting new features on how uh, Zen Educate is operating um, and how it's evolved in the last few months uh, and talk about some new exciting TA opportunities we have um, especially for those of you who may have worked with us before but aren't currently. Um, we're lucky to be joined by some fantastic teaching assistants from uh, the Zen Educate platform, uh, and they'll be sharing their experiences with us today from the classroom, um, but also from their kind of varied backgrounds, um, from actors to airline cabin crew. So um, on to uh, our panelists today, we've got firstly Will Taylor, who uh, works as an actor with the Colovoce and Deer Hunter theatre companies and worked regularly in theatre, radio and TV. Um, and when he's not acting, he works as a TA and uh, more recently a special educational needs TA through Zen Educate. Uh, we also are lucky to be joined by Junior Delius, uh, who's a fully trained actor and musical theatre performer who has extensive experience working within ensemble settings, um, as well as with children and teens in youth theatre company settings. Um, and he's enjoyed working as a supply teaching assistant through Zen Educate since March. And finally, we are joined by Alex McGen, um, who is, when he's not working as a teacher and teaching assistant on our platform, is a member of the cabin crew with British Airways. Um, he, has a, he has a passion for helping young people and also tutors secondary mathematics in his spare time. All right, fantastic. So those are the introductions. Uh, and once again, really happy that you could make it. So just to look at what we'll be discussing today, as you can see on the screen, we'll be looking at what is a teaching assistant and more specifically, what is a special educational needs TA. Um, we'll also look at how to be an effective TA, some kind of top tips from our panelists today. Um, we'll look at the benefits of working as a TA whilst pursuing other careers and the transferable skills that you acquire through working as a TA. Uh, and lastly, we'll look at how we can help you as an educate become um, a teaching assistant and find that perfect role. There will be time, it's worth saying, uh, at the end for questions. So uh, if you do have any, please do uh, jot those down and uh, you can ask myself or any of our panellists today. Um, and it's also worth saying that this is being recorded. So um, don't worry if you, know, you want to listen back, then uh, you will be sent this recording via email. Great. So first of all, we're going to hear from Will Taylor um, all about being a teaching assistant. So uh, a bit of a broad question, Will, but, but what is, in your opinion, a teaching assistant? Key responsibilities, I guess. Yeah, I guess you're right. It, 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 uh, it can encapsulate a lot of different roles. Um, but I guess more broadly, it's kind of facilitating like the learning and development of uh, either individual students or entire classrooms or both. Um, I guess it depends on the role and who you're working with. Um, but most importantly, it's about kind of knowing your role within the classroom and in relation to the teacher that you're working with. Um, and just kind of being a positive inf influence and kind of contributing to the, the collective learning of the class. Um, can involve like odd jobs or um, for, for me personally, I, I often end up doing like lunchtime duties and um, breakfast clubs or after school clubs um, so it can very much vary which kind of keeps things exciting and interesting um, but yeah just making sure you're always there really I guess. Brilliant thanks so much yeah I think as well um, it'd be great to hear a bit about your more recent experience as a special educational needs TA um, that's something I know that you've been doing more recently so 
how does that kind of differ from the the TA responsibilities you spoke about, and and how did you become one? Um, that might be a, a good a good sort of question for our our guests today who might be wondering the same. Yeah, so I had um, limited when I was working with a theatre company called Lung, we did a lot of workshops around the country, working with um, youth groups and uh, you know different kind of groups. Um, a lot of which would have children with special, special educational needs. So that was kind of uh, my first experience of that. Um, but in terms of actual classroom experience, I didn't have a lot, so I found it quite daunting. Um, I currently work with a child in year three with ADHD. Um, but uh, yeah, my experience going into it was limited. So for me, it was very much kind of, um, essentially learning on the job, um, kind of developing a rapport and a relationship with the child quite early on um, and then kind of working out you know you're, you're going to make mistakes things are going to go wrong yeah. but you learn and you build upon that and you kind of create a, a working environment between the two of you that you find works that brings the best out of you as a teacher and the best out of the student so I think you do have to like give yourself a break sometimes and know that things might go wrong yeah and and that you learn from from those experiences, and and yeah, you become a better teacher. Great, You've got to kind of close that. I think. Great, thanks so much. I think that's a really good point you make about you know being realistic that it won't be sort of perfect first time, and it's very much yeah. like a learning process. Um, yeah, are, are there any kind of things that you know, any strategies that you use or um, that that you find particularly helpful at building kind of one to one rapport um, with the people you support? Yeah, um, you've got to you've got to kind of draw a line. You've got to be a mentor, and you've got to be, you know, in many ways, almost like a professional friend. You've got to you've got to show yourself as someone who's enthusiastic and empathetic towards them. Yeah, and make it clear that you've got their best interests at heart. And uh, and sometimes that will involve uh, disciplining. At the same time, you've got to you've got to draw those boundaries and and make the student aware. You know, what's appropriate behaviour and what isn't. Um, but yeah, you've just got to you've just got to make yourself as available as you can be. Um, and often, students when they need help, they feel very reluctant to ask for it. So you have got to keep a very, um, particularly if you're if you're doing general TA work at the same time, but you are still doing the one to one work alongside that. Mm. You've just got to keep a special eye out, really. Um, and kind of be proactive and, and kind of understand when when they might be in need of help but they they don't feel like they're yeah confident to, to address that brilliant thank thanks so much for sharing that will i think it's it's really uh it's a really important takeaway that um you know being an senta uh you know as as you've your story shows that you don't necessarily always have to have a qualification of some kind um you know it, actually being as you said proactive and, and enthusiastic um can can get you a really really long way in in being successful in that role so thanks so much for sharing will right. <laughs> cool so uh, we're now going to move on to uh, speaking to junior um and uh just asking about your experience uh, being a teaching assistant with zen educate um on our platform yeah so zen has been uh very efficient <laughs> in terms of like finding work uh, for me. Um, I believe I did my interview, I think it was 15th of March um, and I, I found work by, by the 29th of March. I think that was my first couple of days working in the school in East Croydon. Um, and bearing in mind, I didn't have any sort of direct in-class teaching experience. I sort of did more like, you know, improvisation workshops at my drama school and working with kids stuff like that, but I didn't have that direct in-class experience. So the fact that they found me work like that was sort of surprising in itself in a COVID pandemic as well. Yeah, <laughs> um, but, yeah but also um, they then have been quite very attentive. So um, any questions I've had, they were all answered. Um, they will sort of message you before you have a, you know, a day at school um, to see, you know, are you okay? You know, even if it's like, for example, I haven't had much experience working with SEN students. So they will sort of call me or message me, say, are you okay doing this, you know, student tomorrow? You know, he has, he's on the autism spectrum. Um, or even like the day after you've done the work, they'll be like, how did it go? They'll call you and be like, you know, how was your day and stuff like that. So they've been very attentive. And 
I've been sort of enjoyed that sort of um, personable communication rather than just the agency and right, they're finding work, but there's not that sort of attentiveness there. Um, but also just having the app and stuff as well. Um, the fact that I can update my calendar, um, obviously as actors, you know, we don't know when our next audition is gonna be. Mm-hmm. I can just update my calendar and say, all right, I'm not working tomorrow because I've got an audition. And yeah. you can see yeah. our own working schedule, um, which is great, especially if you have sort of a, a school that's consistently booking you, um, mm-hmm. but you can still like have, you know, control over your flexibility and when you're working. So yeah, it's been it's been it's been great working with Zen as a teacher assistant so far. So yeah. Brilliant. Thanks so much, Junior. Um, it's really great to hear that feedback um, because it's something we we try really hard at is, you know, is checking in with our candidates and, and making sure that that you're having a good experience. Um, so so that's great. And and obviously the, the tech side of things, having the app um, is something that that we see sort of setting us apart from from agencies. So um, we'll talk, we'll touch on the calendar function later in a bit more detail, but but it's great that you've already set it yourself there. So cool. Um, so yeah, moving on to uh, the actual work then, we, we obviously spoke to Will about um, his, his experience as a TA and, and an SENTA. Um, it'd be great to hear from your point of view, Junior. Obviously you come from more of the, the acting background and now being a TA for, for a few months now, uh, what do you feel like makes an effective teaching assistant? An effective teaching assistant, I would say, um, well, first one, similar to what Will said, is to sort of go in and sort of build that relationship with the students straight away. Um, you know, don't go in and sort of like, even if you've never done teaching assistant before, just try and sort of build that rapport, try and make them laugh, try and find, talk about things that they're interested in. Um, especially if you have a one-to-one, uh, if you're working one-to-one with a student, because um, I was working one-to-one with a student in one of the other schools that I worked at, um, and he just loved speaking about, you know, the Blitz and war, like, that was his thing. Um, he was on the autism spectrum, but he, we would just speak about that, and I was sort of, you know, get in with him and sort of like, you know, try and um, speak about things that you're in- he's interested in, um, but also just to also build a relationship with the teachers, you know, especially in the staff room as well. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? Don't sort of like go in the staff room. And um, I know it's like some people sort of sit quietly and sort of like, but try and just, I guess, act as if you're a permanent staff there, you know, act as if you're a permanent staff there, build those relationships with the teachers and get involved because it will sort of make your work life more enjoyable. It will just make it more as if, you know, it's a good place to work and you just have fun. So, and you get a lot of the gossip as well, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> you get a lot of gossip. But yes, yeah, so, um, and I would say also, speaking more of like from an actor's point of view, just use your listening skills yep. and, observation, yeah. and observational skills as well. Sort of like, as I said, obviously having those conversations with the students, sort of try and just listen to what they're saying, um, especially if it's a student that's quite disruptive or might be classed as a bad student, but... Um, most of the time you've got to sort of listen to see if it's a deeper, something deeper is going on um, and try and see how you can adapt your behaviour to try and encourage them and infuse them to want to learn. Um, I would say use your improvisational skills as well, especially in those times where um, there'll be lessons or, for example, we had a sports day um, just last week and there weren't many lessons after that day and then there was just a period where they were all sitting in the class and I was just like, uh, okay, what do I do? So I was like, right, quick, let's do a copy game. So I got a student up to the front. I was like, right, everyone copy him. And then they all loved it because they can just do dabs and, like, you know, and sort of, you know what I mean? So you've got to be quick with the ball and just use the improvisation skills that we all have as actors. Yeah. Um, and lastly, I would say, uh, hmm, yeah, just be sort of playful and just, yeah, don't be afraid to be a kid yourself. Yeah. Because um, obviously we, us as actors, we go to drama school, we train to, yeah, obviously get technique and become, um, you know, good at our craft. But essentially, we're trying to make our minds more childlike in itself, you know, to be able to, you know, try and, I don't know, use tactics or try and sort of understand, you know, the behaviors of people because, or, or students, or just be active in terms of learning as well. So, one of the students in one of the schools that I worked at, they just love the guided reading. So they yeah, love yeah. <laughs> when they have me, it's like, it's all fun and it's all, you know, active and it's all like, 
and we make sounds and we're just you know what i mean it's not just we're reading and it's just fun so yeah i think we've got a, a frozen situation there um but we'll just wait for for junior to get back whilst whilst he does come back i think he touched on some really important points there that um you know if you are um watching this and you're an actor uh, then it's a really good sort of um kind of profession to come from and and go into ta work you know building rapport being quite outgoing um is is something that's that's really beneficial being a ta um and there are certainly lots of transferable skills that i think um i think junior has, has really touched on there so so that's really great i think we're going to have to move on to um our next our next point which will be uh, we'll ask will um just about the benefits of working as a, a supply teaching assistant whilst you're actually looking for acting work or actually um some of our participants may be studying so what are those benefits of the supply work well i mean firstly it's very flexible and the hours are it's very easy to work auditions and um, and acting jobs around that, particularly yeah. if you're doing public supply. If you're in a um, if you're in like a more full uh, full time position, it can be a bit trickier. But it depends on the school you're with; they might accommodate for that. Yeah. Um, so fundamentally, very flexible. Um, uh, and I guess most importantly, it's fun. Um, and like uh, actors spend a lot of time out of work and you'll spend a lot of time looking for the work yeah. um, or, or study and often not getting the work um, and I think you know one thing that a lot of actors struggle with friends of mine certainly myself is um, a sense of purpose uh, uh, of outside of acting sure. um, right. I've worked in a lot of jobs uh, hospitality work or, or positions like that which um, can you know it can be great but it can also be quite disheartening yeah um and it got to a point where i was thinking you know if, if i'm going to be pursuing this silly career for a long time <laughs> um then i've got to find something that isn't acting that i find rewarding and enjoyable and makes me want to get up in the morning and uh i knew part of me wanted to be a teacher in some capacity mm -hmm. um and as soon as i was kind of pointed in the direction of this kind of work by some other actor friends I jumped on it and I can honestly say it was certainly one of the best decisions I made in the past few years because I I can't recommend it if, if you're interested and you're here for the workshop that maybe you're in a similar place as I am uh I I can't recommend it enough. I think it, it it like you'll come some days will be difficult some will be the best days of your life but more importantly, you'll probably come home every day with a smile on your face and feeling like you've done something uh, positive and something that, you know, without getting too ideological or whatever, something that, you know, contributes to society in a way that, you know, is great. Yeah. Thanks so much, Will. I think it's a really important point. Like, of course, an obvious benefit is that it's flexible, but but I think actually finding fulfillment in work is something that's really yeah. important. And and TA work can certainly uh, can certainly do that um and like you say come home with a smile on your face feel like you've made a difference so um so that's uh, that's really fantastic to hear welcome back junior we've just moved on to um to another slide sorry yeah, but thank you me. thank you so much uh for your for your input there um on the sort of the skills as well uh between kind of ta work and, and acting um we are going to move on but there will certainly be time to ask uh, will and junior more questions in the q a session uh in just a little bit um so thank you so much guys um and yeah we're now moving on to uh, alex uh so we're, we're gonna yeah look at the, the benefits of, of TA work um, in, in a different career here, working part-time as a cabin crew. Um, what's your experience of that? Uh, it's me, yeah. <laughs> so, right, okay, so um, a few things. Uh, I think already uh, Junie and Will have already touched on this. Uh, flexibility and uh, being cabin crew, your roster changes all the time. So it's, it's a good thing that you can decide when you want to work and for how long very often, especially if it's like a short kind of term supply. Uh, second point, um, additional source of income uh, has never harmed anyone. So it's, 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 it's a good thing. And I think um, a lot of people need that, especially those who live in London. 
Um, a third thing is that there is no requirement for a lesson planning, calling the parents or um, marking. And uh, as probably people know, when you're a teacher, there's a lot of extra work uh, involved. So as far as I know, you are actually spared of that. So the moment you finish at three, four o'clock, you can just go home and kind of forget about it if you want to. But there is no additional work uh, required of you. And also sense of belonging, because on the one hand, it's amazing when you kind of travel the world and see these places and all the rest. But at the same time, you almost never work with the same people. It's, it's very rare that you see the same face. It does happen, but not very often. And I think some people do want to have that kind of stability and they do want to have that kind of anchor when they can, when they can, when they can actually see a familiar face. So that would also be um, a good thing in, in, in my view. Also kind of change of scene. It's good to probably do different things as well, not just doing the same thing all the time. So, you know, uh, doing something different is, is also good. And I think somebody has already mentioned that as well. It's also additional safety net. In case somebody might, you know, lose a job, you can always follow on to that. So. Yeah. Brilliant. Thanks so much, Alex. Um, that's really comprehensive. Um, that's brilliant. Thank you. Um, so moving on to uh, obviously the current situation with with lots of sort of air travel just not happening due to due to COVID. Um, it'd be great to hear your opinion on this and, and how for people who are attending this, who we know are actually cabin crew, how uh, being a TA could be the perfect job if they're waiting to, to get back to um, what they love and, and being in the skies. Yeah, absolutely. Well, the first point would be um, um, you can complement your source of income because those people who are um, on furlough, they do get some money, but those obviously who have been made redundant, there is no, like, you know, there's no money. But if you are on furlough, so it's definitely a good thing you can complement your source of income whilst waiting to get back to flying. Uh, second point is um, there's almost no additional training or cost to becoming a TA. So uh, it's not like becoming a teacher where it requires a lot of time, money and energy and, and, and the rest. Becoming a TA, as far as I know, is not that difficult. Uh, third point is that the, this position is uh, usually in high demand. So usually they need teaching assistance and there's thousands of them and thousands of schools all across the country. So that's uh, another good point. And also um, there's a large number of schools uh, and that means that uh, it's fairly easy to find a place uh, fairly close to where you live. It's not like when, you know, like being cabin crew, we only have one base in the UK, it's London. We have a lot of people who commute from Glasgow, Edinburgh, and even further um, like from Spain and other places. So uh, the fact that there's so many schools, you know, in the country means that most likely you will, you'll, you'll be able to find something fairly close to where you live. Yeah. Absolutely. I think that really good points again. Thanks, Alex. And I think um, something from from our point of view that, that we often hear from candidates and all of you have said it today is, is the flexibility with TA work, both in terms of location, but also in terms of, uh, you know, day to day. Um, if you want to work on, on a Wednesday, uh, but you can't work on a Thursday, then you can do that through our calendar on, on the app. Um, and, uh, and we have preferences on our platform. So uh, if, if you only want to travel a certain amount of time, then the roles that you'll see by and large will be in that preference. Um, so I think, yeah, in your, you know, for, for cabin crew, where you say there's one base in London, uh, we actually work with schools in uh, London, Birmingham and Manchester, and we're always growing. Um, and so if you are in any of those uh, hubs at the moment, then uh, there's certainly going to be schools around you. Um, so great. Thank you so much, Alex, for, for sharing that. Um, before we, uh, yeah, actually, one one final thing that we did touch on with Will and Junior um, is just about those um, those transferable uh, skills, actually. So, yeah, between working as cabin crew and, and teaching assistant. Right. Okay. So, um, social skills. Um, you know, you're in, a, in an environment where you have to communicate with people, so communication as well. Um, although I personally find it a little bit easier reasoning with adults than students especially teenagers but you yep. can definitely use your uh, communication skills also um the ability to resolve difficult situations because when you're on the plane it's like a classroom in that kind of sense you can't just say i'm leaving i'm gonna go and i'm gonna come back the next day you are there you have to resolve the situation you have mm. to come up with 
some kind of um, solution. Also, uh, as far as I know, all cabinetry are first aid trained. So probably it's also a good thing that you can, you know, maybe I'm pr pretty much sure that in most schools they have first aid, um, people who have first aid trained, but obviously you can also help. And, and final point, resilience, definitely. You, you require resilience in, the, in those environments. Yeah, absolutely. I, I really like your point about the kind of um, resolution and kind of conflict resolution being on a plane, absolutely, um, you know, where something happens and, and it's similar to being in, in a classroom. You're there for a set period of time and, and something needs to be resolved. So um, I hadn't thought of that. That's, that's really great. Thanks, Alex. Cool. So we're going to move on now to a little bit more about uh, our platform and, and how we can help you become a teaching assistant. Um, so for those of you who have registered or worked with us before, um, you will receive an email asking you to update your employment preferences um, so you can come back on board with us and uh, sort of be reactivated and, and we can find you work uh, nice and quickly. Um, and if you haven't yet registered with us, you'll receive an email with a registration link uh, in which you can create a profile as a teaching assistant. Um, and once you've registered, the team here at Zen uh, will help you through the whole process until your profile is completed, what we call verified, and you're ready to go out to work. Um, just a quick snapshot of what that looks like. It's quite straightforward. Um, like Junior actually alluded to, um, there's an interview where we kind of dig into your your experience, but also your preferences, the kind of role you're looking for, um, you know, in terms of uh, minutes, in terms of commute, but also location and key stage. Um, so age of the children you want to support. Um, and then once we've done your interview and got the other vetting documents, such as uh, a DBS check and your references, um, your profile will be verified and uh, you'll be ready to go and uh, start your TA work. So um, in terms of long-term uh, or permanent teaching assistant positions, um, this is, uh, well, it's the same process that I just described, but once you actually are on our platform, then um, it's definitely worthwhile looking out for the jobs tab on our platform. So everything we get from you in the onboarding process about your preferences, we use and uh, we have a, a clever matching technology that will give you schools and jobs that are only within your preferences. So um, you won't be having to scroll through loads of things that you aren't interested in, which can often be the case on, on other job boards um, and it will be really targeted. So that's one way of doing it. You can also register your interest in jobs um, once you are verified, but uh, once you're verified, there's also a team here at Zen Educate who will be looking at your profile, seeing what you want and know the schools on our platform. And they'll also get in touch with you um, from, from our office here. So um, there's kind of a few ways you can find a long-term role, um, sort of your, you can do it yourself by registering for uh, interest for jobs, but we will also do it from our side, um, looking and, and matching you for your perfect role. Brilliant. So um, a bit more about Zen Educate and who we are. Um, I think if you are familiar with um, kind of traditional agencies, it's important to stress that we are not an agency. Um, we're a technology company and a social enterprise. So we have a platform that connects teaching assistants, you guys, with uh, our schools. Um, and we are the only technology solution that's accredited on uh, the Department for Education Framework. And as I said earlier, we work with over 400 schools in Manchester, um, Birmingham and London. So I think this has been spoken about earlier uh, by Junior especially, which was, which was great to hear about the benefits of working on uh, the Zen Educate platform. Um, our, our technology kind of gives you simplicity and control. Um, so in terms of when you're available, when you want to accept or decline work, it's all kind of at your fingertips. Um, rather with a traditional agency, you might have to be calling up people, them calling you. Uh, there's lots of kind of paper involved. Having an app uh, on your phone kind of makes it much more streamlined. I already sp spoke about the smart matching, but this is just our, our tech again, matching you with the roles that, that 
fulfill your preferences. Um, and lastly, uh, in comparison with traditional agencies, because we don't take a commission um, from the daily rate we charge schools, we uh, on average actually pay teaching assistants um, more than traditional agencies. Great, so I'm just going to go into a bit more detail if you are new to Zen Educate about how to um, use the app. So um, it's, it's nice and straightforward. And on the right hand side there, you've got uh, an example of a booking um, and you can see there how simple it is. You can accept or decline that booking. You can see on Google Maps where the school is, um, which will allow you to obviously um, see how long it will take you to get there. You've got other information, the name of the school, the start, time, um, the role, so general cover, and also the daily rate. So it's all there in one place um, for you. In terms of how, how it would work uh, on your first day, then a school would request you and then, yeah, you just need to accept or decline. Um, and if you are working with other agencies currently, you might be using timesheets, um, but actually we don't need timesheets. It's all done electronically. Um, so, so that's also a real, a real bonus. Brilliant. So uh, on the onto the the calendar, uh, which is a real kind of thing that that Junior spoken about, and I know Alex as well, uh, and I think Will did as well. So all three. Um, the the calendar here here it is. So what it allows you to do is set your availability when you can and can't work. So um, if, for example, I was a teaching assistant and I couldn't work on Monday and Friday, uh, then you can set yourself as unavailable on every Monday and Friday. Now. What that means is that our team here would never kind of hassle you on those days to go in for work um, because you just wouldn't show up in our searches. Um, and that obviously gives you a real kind of flexibility, but also autonomy to plan around other careers um, like our panelists here or other sort of life commitments that might come up. And onto the next part, which is about the jobs tab. I've spoken about this a few times. If you're looking for long term jobs, um, once you've completed your Zen profile, please check out the jobs tab. Um, here's an example of what it looks like. Um, so uh, there's the job title at the top there. Uh, this is a special educational needs uh, teaching assistant uh, for people with uh, ADHD and um, ASD. And there's a description of what the role will entail. Um, and then at the bottom, you'll see it says, I'm interested or hide. Um, so there you go. That's what I was saying about registering your interest. So if you see that job, you can select I'm interested. What that does is it tells our team here that you're interested in that job. And then we can give you a call and uh, have a conversation about getting you out to it. Brilliant. So, um, before our questions, just some more things uh, to, to look at is, is what our TAs have to say. So um, we've been very lucky to be joined by three fantastic TAs today and hear their, their thoughts. Um, but we also have Trustpilot reviews. We ask um, all of our TAs to leave those. Um, and here's, here's a couple for you to, to look at. Um, which, yeah, which is uh, something we're really proud of. We've actually had 167 uh, reviews in the past year and 142 of those have been five star, um, which, which is cool. Brilliant. So um, last of all, I thought if, if you are in Manchester, it would be important to, to say that although it's a new region for us, um, we, we've actually managed to grow there really, really well. And we work in all boroughs apart from Wigan at the moment. Um, and we also work in uh, schools spread across the whole of Birmingham, as well as Walsall and Tamworth, if you are from those regions. Last of all, we uh, just to kind of paint a picture of our growth. Um, here are some new kind of areas that we've been working with recently. And uh, there are so many to, to reel off, but some of them, uh, you know, including Lewisham, Enfield, Hen Hertfordshire uh, and Havering. Um, so to name but a very few, but there you go on the left hand side, all kind of new schools and new opportunities for TAs at this very moment. 
So yeah, just before the questions, something that I'd love to introduce is some new features that we've added um, to benefit teaching assistants to our platform. So um, the first thing is we now ask for feedback from teachers and teaching assistants once you've gone into work at a school. Um, you can see the kind of things that we ask and it's pretty straightforward. It would literally take about one or two minutes to do. Um, and what this means is that you guys, uh, you can, but we'll publish this feedback and you can see you know what it's really like to work there and uh, it gives you if you're going into a new school you've never been in it gives you a bit of an impression um, of what that school and what that day will be like so um, there we go there's some published feedback some examples of that um, and so it's just you know for me as a teacher um, going into a new school it's just reassuring to kind of know um, know some things like the top one be prepared for great support and lovely students if you were feeling a bit anxious about your new day in this school um, that should hopefully be be quite a reassuring thing to read um, at you know 8 a.m just before you get to the school gates so another new feature is um, something that we send sort of a push notification um, just before you go out to work, uh, just to just in the morning of your work to check you're still available. Um, and uh, if you kind of respond to this, but don't have work that day, then it will really increase your chances of finding work um, because then it, it notifies someone in our team that yes, you're available for work and, and they will work, they will work to find you that. Another new feature that we've implemented to help teaching assistants is reasons for declining a role. So if you decided to decline a role for, for whatever reason, um, for example, there it says too far to travel uh, or I'm not available and uh, more there. Um, what this gives us is an understanding of why you don't want to work at this school or in that role. Um, and you can also then tick the uh, drop down, don't match me with this school again. So um, what that gives you again is as a way of kind of filtering the results that you're seeing on our app. So, you know, if you see something that is um, in your opinion too far, please do make the most of this. Um, and then it would kind of, it gives us a better understanding of exactly what you want. So we can find you that ideal role. Okay, brilliant. So that's everything on uh, Zen Educate platform and, and how the app works. But um, if you do have any questions, please do um, put those forward. Um, I already have some questions here uh, for the panelists. So I'm just going to have a quick look at these ones. Um, fantastic. So we've got one here, how do I become a teaching assistant if I have an MBA in management and three to four months classroom experience? I'm interested in business education in secondary education and subjects like economics. Um, it sounds like this person has lots of experience. I don't know who would like to um, kind of take this question and, and say how you think they could be a teaching assistant. Will, would you like pretty to answer this one? Sounds, pretty, yeah, pretty easily by the sounds of it. He's got loads of experience. Well, whoever it is has got loads of experience yeah um, i think yeah no sorry go on uh yeah uh, has the person like applied through zen yeah um i i don't know but i think they definitely should do um because it yeah. sounds like they'd be a great ta <laughs> junior would you like to touch on that as well you you obviously coming from sort of not a huge amount of classroom experience but lots of like sort of educational stuff in in an educational setting um and yeah, and how have you found that transition, I guess, into the classroom? Yeah, I found it um, quite easy. Um, as, as I said, I didn't have any sort of direct in-class experience. Um, I just sort of thought, okay, I also <laughs> have an undergrad in geography. Or maybe I can become a teacher, <laughs> teacher assistant. So, um, you know, I lost my job. I was done my part-time part job. And I was like, right, I got my other degree. I can try and use it. And then, you know, Zen was straightforward. Um, easy sort of process um, in terms of like you know vetting and everything as well um, but yeah I mean I think that anyone can be a teaching assistant you just got to have those sort of um, personable skills you just sort of got to build as we said build a relationship with the students and um, just listen to the instructions and just go with because you're learning on the on the job as well um, you know the processes of each school you know every school is different um, and yeah 
just I think I think whoever that is can <laughs> can become a teaching assistant um, easily. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank, thank you so much. Uh, and it's great to hear that, you know, that is your experience because we know that's the experience of so many TAs who, who don't necessarily have loads of loads of experience. Um, Brilliant. We have got a question about um, if you forwarded documentation for us, but um, not kind of had a, a response from from the team. I think if that is the case, then what I would recommend is um, emailing down there. You can see support at zeneducate.com. What that means is if you send us an email there, our customer support team will pick that up and be able to um, kind of transfer that off to uh, a member of the resourcing team who can then be in touch with you. Uh, alternatively, please do feel free to call the number at the bottom there as well and uh, either one of those ways we, we will be able to start um, sort of resuming your your onboarding um, nice and quickly. So I've got another question here from someone uh, who has got a level three support teaching and learning um, so some kind of qualification there um, and is doing a voluntary placement in a school um, but has not got their certificate yet. Um, Alex I don't know if you want to pick this one up. Um, they, they've asked can I get a job through Zen? They, they don't have their qualification certificate but they have voluntary experience. Um, what would your, what would your uh, want, thoughts on this one be? I, as far as I know, um, I might be absolutely wrong, but I think uh, when you become a, te a teaching assistant, you uh, get uh, training on the job. And uh, I would definitely recommend to complete the L3 uh, qualification. Uh, but as far as I know, um, it's as long as you have your GCSEs, I might be wrong, but I think uh, you're good to go. And obviously you have to do, have to go through the vetting process and all the rest. So, yeah. Brilliant. Absolutely right. Yeah. So um, completely, you know, qualifications are not a barrier to becoming a teaching assistant um, and you have voluntary experience. So as long as you have some kind of experience of supporting young people in an educational setting, then um, that's really great. And, and, a, and a school would love to have you as a teaching assistant, I'm sure. So um, again, uh, that would be, uh, that would be really worthwhile. Um, it is just also wary of, of, you know, the grade C in, in um, maths and English, but um, at GCSE, but, uh, but certainly I think um, that's something that's, uh, yeah, you know, qualifications are not a barrier to being a teaching assistant so please if you have some experience of supporting young people in an education environment please do uh, register with us brilliant i don't think we have any more questions from our um, participants today um, so uh, I just wanted to say a huge thank you to, to Will, to Alex and to Junior. It's been really great to hear from, from you guys. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's so fantastic to hear from our, from our candidates. In my role, I, I help candidates, as I said earlier, get onto the platform. Um, but it's really nice to hear about your experience once you've actually been on the platform and finding work. Um, so... In terms of next steps, please do contact with us and uh, tell us your thoughts. We've got Twitter, Facebook, um, and Instagram as well. Um, we also do podcasts called 10 with Zen. So you can find that um, wherever you get your podcasts from. And they're sort of 10 minute, really kind of bite-sized, really engaging episodes talking to kind of school leaders and, and people in education. So if you, you're interested in education, um, then please do check that out as well. Um, as, I, as I've said, please do contact Teach with us at Zen Educate or support at Zen Educate um, if you'd like to get in touch more directly with the team. I just wanted to add something as well. Of um, course, yeah. Yeah, so in terms of um, becoming a TA as well, um, I, I know some people feel like, oh, I might not have you know, the required sort of like qualifications or like safeguarding training as well. So yeah. you know, Zen does do a course as well. Um, that will sort of prepare you for school if you know anything was to happen with a student you might not know how to handle it um, and that sort of safeguarding um, training they will provide um, and they'll provide all the relevant documents you know <clears throat> government documents as well that you can read um, and yeah so I think also as from an ACTS point of view as well mm -hmm. like becoming a TA you will meet other actors if that makes sense <laughs> as well on the other TAs that are actors um, which is good as well because in the school that I'm 
that uh, I've been there the longest um, since March, I've sort of like met three other actors and it's been great to be people in that. And, yeah. And yeah, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's a great way to sort of meet other TAs and see what they do as well. So, yeah. That's, that's so great. Thanks. Thanks, Junior. So, uh, I, I hadn't appreciated that, but it's it's also like a good networking opportunity, yeah. um, which is great. And just touching on the safeguarding course, um, it's a CPD um, accredited and so a fully certified safeguarding course. Um, and you do get a certificate once you pass it that, of course, you can keep and you can um, show to schools. So um, it's it's something that is is kind of a lot of thought has gone into it. Um, and once you pass it, it, it holds some weight. Um, so Thanks so much for, for bringing that up, Junior. Um, Alex, I know you had something to share there as well. Uh, just, uh, just a small thing. I just wanted to um, tell people that uh, uh, not to be put off by some bad experience. If you have some bad day at a particular school, it doesn't mean it's going to last forever. You know, so just like we have some good and bad days, the same thing with schools. You know, sometimes we have a bad day, but the next day might be absolutely fantastic. And that's the interesting thing about this job. You know, sometimes it's not that good and sometimes it's absolutely amazing. Yeah. Great. That's a great point. I think, Will, you touched on that early, earlier as well. So, you know, sometimes it might be tricky, but I think the overriding thing is that, that you'll feel fulfilled and, and have a smile on your face. Um, so thanks so much, Alex. Will, Alex or Junior, do, do you have anything final that you'd, you'd like to add um, that, that's kind of come up uh, during this discussion? No, at all. If you're thinking cool. about it, do it. <laughs> Definitely. You won't regret it, I promise. Fantastic. Thank you so much. And yeah, just once more, thanks to thanks to everyone for coming and uh, and a huge thank you to our panelists today, uh, Will, Alex and um, Junior. It's been really great to hear about your experience. Thank you, Peter.